<laughs> so um, we are going to end this evening with some spooky stories from Jane Iyer. Jane, are you there? Jane, Jane, please be there. Oh, Jane's there. Hi, Jane. Hello. <laughs> so Jane Iyer is a Brit who has lived in Singapore for quite a few years. Um, she grew up as a child in Malaysia. Her father was a BBC broadcaster. So she has been in this part of the world for a long time. She, uh, a few years ago, did a career switch and became a tour guide and opened Jane's Singapore tour to, uh, to meld her passion for history, heritage, and culture. <laughs> with her, her passion for growing a new business. So Jane is one of the foremost respected tour guides on the island. And she um, she also likes all things kind of spooky and scary. I know this because I've spent a lot of time with her. So Jane, I have to ask, you're going to tell us about all the spooky hotspots on the island. But before we go there, I need to know, have you ever had a personal spooky encounter on one of your well, tours? Okay. I have not actually seen her myself, but in driving down Mount Pleasant Road only a couple of years ago with a couple of ladies I was taking on a tour and explaining all the interesting things about Mount Pleasant Road, many of which are spooky, not least because it's right next to Bukit Brown Cemetery, um, and there's lots of rumours around about what happened in some of the houses during World War II, courtesy of the Japanese. But in addition to that, there is a big story about the Pontianak. The Pontianak is possibly the most famous uh, spooky character in Singapore and also in Malaysia and Indonesia. And basically, she is the ghost of a lady who has died usually in childbirth. Uh, as a result of which she comes back to particularly pants on men because she feels that they were responsible for her predicament, getting pregnant and so on and so forth in the first place. So I haven't seen her myself, but as I was driving up Mount Pleasant Road with these two ladies only a couple of years ago, uh, with a driver that they had provided, the driver who was of Malay origin, because Malays very much believe in Pontianaks, suddenly turned around as I was telling these stories and said, I've seen her. I went, what? <laughs> he said, uh, a year or so back, I was driving up this road at dusk and I thought there was something wrong with the tire on my car and I stopped. Big mistake. Um, and he got the classic whiff of uh, frangipani, which is what you normally get when a Pontianak is in the, in the distance. So watch out. This, by the way, we, we, we women don't have to worry about this. It's all the men who are going to get attacked. Um, and then it turns into this horrible rotten smell as the Pontianak gets closer. But anyway, he, he said he didn't smell the rotten smell. He only smelled the frangipani. Uh, but he looked at the tire and it seemed okay. So he got back in the car and he's driving up Mount Pleasant Road. And all of a sudden he looks in his rear view mirror and there she is in the back seat. Yes. Uh -oh. Sitting there with, they traditionally wear white clothing and have long black hair. And her, she was sitting there with her long black hair draped over her face. And of course, I said to him, well, what on earth did you do? He said, I was petrified. I just kept driving, 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 driving. And eventually, after a couple of minutes, I looked again and she'd gone. So, gentlemen, if you're to watching um, this, I'm sorry, this is not going to be a great quality photo, but this is basically what she's going to look like. OK, long black hair, white shroud sort of thing and uh, really googly eyes, right? <laughs> but uh, the thing is, the other thing about the Pontianak is that she was a very, very, very popular figure in old movies that were made here in Singapore, particularly in the 50s and 60s. And so you can actually go online and you can find old Cathay movies, Shaw Brother movies and so forth. And they are absolute classics. They are brilliant. I mean, they're so sort of corny, very frank in so many ways, but, but they are great. But just a year or so ago, Glenn Gui brought out this movie. Sorry, it's going maybe backwards on your screen, but it's a Revenge of the Pontianak. Mm -hmm. And this is a movie that came out, um, I say, just over a year ago, and I was lucky enough to go to the premiere of it. 
and funnily enough, sat right behind the actress who had played the Ponti the uh, the heroine in the uh, actually the Pontianak in the movie. But she said, interestingly enough, that they had filmed it up in Malaysia, in Perak, and whilst they were filming this movie, a real life Pontianak was watching them. So, <laughs> so let that uh, chill your spine or something. <laughs> I literally am getting shivers. I am such yeah. a security cat. I, I'm not going to sleep tonight. Thanks so much for that, Jane. <laughs> yeah, so. Excellent, excellent. Good. Then mission accomplished. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's it's sort of interesting. Uh, there's no question about it that Singapore is. Um, it, there's a lot of superstition here. It's quite endemic in the Malay culture. It's endemic in the Chinese culture as well. And in fact, just a couple of years ago, they did a survey of Singapore. Singaporeans and 68% of people said they believed in ghosts. So go figure. It's it's certainly a it's certainly a country that believes in its traditions and also its uh, superstitions. So what are some of the hot spots around here? I mean, I've heard, you know, some of the black and white enclaves and Alexandra Hospital has some creepy things. Like what are the, you know, your top three hot spots for I don't know, par paranormal activity? <laughs> Yeah, there are there are actually um, rather a lot. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, anything with the cemetery involved, like Bukit Brown, would be a big hot spot, um, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, Mount Pleasant that I've just been uh, talking about, Road, which is, of course, quite nearby, is another one. Interesting enough, Fort Canning, of course, was one of the first places that they felt there were ghosts um, at because it was the pl place that the Malay kings lived back in the 14th century. So when the British came here um, in 1819 with Raffles, they wanted to clear all the undergrowth up there because nobody had lived there for many hundreds of years. And they could not get any of the local people to go up that hill because they were too scared by the ghosts of the kings. And um, eventually they had to get people to come down from Malacca to actually help to clear the hill, which is interesting. So they did. And then as years have gone by, there have been lots of stories about Fort Canning. In fact, they say even the Japanese, when they were here in World War II, didn't really like being on Fort Canning. They were pretty scared of some of the things that happened up there. So Fort Canning is, is another hot spot. But honestly, there are lots of them around Singapore. There really are, because we've had a lot of uh, activity here, should we put it that way, over you know a, a short period of time, relatively. Um, in actual fact, another one that I think is very interesting is the Dempsey area. Um, because that lots of things have happened around there and uh, we're actually going to be running some Halloween tours around Dempsey uh, as I know you know Paige um, this coming weekend and we've chosen it specifically because we believe that yeah, there's activity um, and the lady I'm doing it with is she's quite sensitive to these things and she knows about them and she said yeah this is going to be a good place to do <laughs> to actually make maybe a bit of contact even you know we'll have to see um, so in a nice way but we'll try to do it in an, an intelligent and empathetic way so that nobody gets too scared including the ghosties and ghoulies themselves but there's been a lot of things that have happened around there there was um you know world war one world war two various other things um at the end yeah i mean anything to do with where the japanese were yeah you're going to find there's quite a lot of activity around those areas too so lots of areas essentially wow okay jane well um thanks so much <laughs> <laughs> My head's a little nice chilly. Else? <laughs> My spine's a little chill. <laughs> no, I think that's wonderful. Thanks so much. Oh, you're, you're most, most welcome. And uh, as I say, you know, the, this, honestly, this is a huge topic and we could talk about it for hours in terms of all the different, you know, belief systems from the Malays and the Chinese and so forth. But uh, yeah, it's, as I say, I think when you approach this, you've got to, we're trying to approach it in an intelligent way so it doesn't become too sort of silly, you know. But, um, but yeah, uh, the, I do believe. I'm half Welsh. I'm, I'm Celtic, so I think I, I believe in these things anyway. <laughs> there are more things in heaven and earth, you know. Well, anyway, happy Halloween, everybody. On that note. Do you offer the uh, spooky tours throughout the year or just around Halloween? Yeah, we've just started them actually. It's what you know. We we do heritage and history tours, as as Paige has mentioned all the time. We've done many many different topics, um, but it's been something that I've been thinking about for a long time because I know people are interested. You know, but it's a fascinating topic. But I was sort of a bit reluctant to do it if I couldn't find a way of doing it well. And I believe that I found the right partner in in Danny, and uh, we're you know we've got an interesting tour which is a combination of history and 
and a little bit of the spook, you know, and the spooky as well. Um, and we're doing it, as I say, as, I think in an intelligent way, um, rather than just you know, sort of silly boo-boo, which is fine for children, but uh, I think for adults, you need to do something a little bit cleverer than that. So, yeah, so it's just new, but uh, we hope that this will be the start of a series of Spooky Singapore um, uh, tours that we'll do in different parts of the island. Right. And Sentosa, by the way, as well. That's another one. Sentosa has been quite a lot of activity there, because that used to be called Black and Mati, right? Death from Behind. So even its name is all right. <laughs> Death from what? Death from Behind is the translation. There's a couple of different translations for it. And, and the stories vary in terms of the provenance of that name. You know, it was only changed to Sentosa in the 70s, which means peace and harmony, right? Um, <laughs> which is a bit more tourist friendly. Um, prior, prior to that, it was called Pula Black and Mati, the island of death from behind. They, the, the most colourful explanation, and let's go with that one because it's much more fun, is that there were a lot of pirates around in those days, that they lived on Sentosa or Pula Black and Mati, and uh, they used to basically hijack um, people coming through the straits between the mainland and, and the island. And of course, their favourite modus operandi was to jump aboard with a cutlass or a knife or whatever, and slit people's throats from behind. Um, so <laughs> that's the colourful explanation for the name of the islands, but uh, there are more prosaic ones, but let's stick with the colourful one. <laughs> All right, and then on that note, Shane. Is <laughs> <laughs> that enough for you? <laughs> no, I, no joke. Like, between the spooky book and that, like, I, it's not going to sleep tonight. So, so much fun. You don't, want to picture, you don't want to picture the Oran Minyak, the oily man who might come and pick, you know. No, sort of, thank you. Uh, we can, we can a nice one. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it.